Hello, I'm Anne Montgomery, Editor-in-Chief of Bioprocess International. I'm talking today with Pete Gagnon, who's the Group Manager of Downstream Processing at the Bioprocessing Technology Institute in Singapore. I'd like to begin with your general impressions of downstream processing. What changes have you seen in the past 10 years? The thing that occurs to me first is the saying by Isaac Newton that if I have seen further than other men, it's because I've stood on the shoulders of giants. And that's definitely the case in this field. Um, the things that people take for granted today are things that we had to like, you know, just dig hammer and tongs for every little piece of information. And so it's because of all those advances over these past decades, we have a huge body of knowledge that really helps us to, you know, speed up process development and make better processes faster uh, than we ever could, you know, at any time in the past. What is the most difficult unit operation in downstream processing? There's none that's more easy or development. You know, it's like uh, they're each a challenge unto themselves, and uh, you never know until you get into it which one is going to present itself as being the most entertaining. Uh, speaking of entertaining, uh, what about the scale-up processes? Is there a unit operation that's more difficult to scale up? No. Nope. One of the little uh, surprises with uh, downstream processing is generally that processes get better as you scale them up. And the reason is that because with small scale processes you always have you know, high relative losses. In small columns you have high inefficiencies from bad flow distribution. So there are lots of little problems with the, the scale down parts of it. But scale up, you know, processes generally get better. And I think uh, you know, in general that makes scale up uh, an easier proposition than doing the original process development. What tools or new technologies do you suggest people use to address some of these more challenging steps? I think one of the biggest changes is uh, analytical ch uh, technology has developed really rapidly. So now it's easy for us to get uh, really good quality data uh, on a lot of things that you know just weren't practical at all. Things that would have been left until the end of a process, you know, just because it was so expensive and so time consuming for every data point that you did as few as possible. So now you have things like uh, qPCR where you can like test every single fraction for DNA content. Uh, you have lots of different kinds of ELISAs. So you can do really in-depth characterization of every aspect of every process. And you know, it gives you a much deeper dimensional view of everything that you're doing. And uh, it's, it's like the difference between walking a type rope with a blindfold you know, versus being able to walk around in three-dimensional space, you know, with your eyes both wide open. Would you like to offer any final thoughts? The challenge is, with so much information available now, it's hard to keep up with everything. Uh, it's impossible to keep up with everything. You know, that's one of the things. Uh, but I would say to uh, anyone, for example, who's trying to decide on a career, I'd say downstream processing is where you want to be. It's uh, the cell culture guys have, like, hogged the limelight for a while, but downstream has always been the real glamour place to be. Uh, it has like a nice combination of having a metric aspect to it, so you can do some really sophisticated engineering and whatnot, but it's still biological enough to be interesting and surprising. So uh, if I had to do it all over again, I'd be right here. Good to hear. <laughs> Thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. I'm sure I will. Thank you very much.